business suit or a dress fits. And as far as behavior goes, you always want to give a, a firm handshake, make good eye contact, be polite, and always smile. Now the types of interviews. interviews. I'm going to go over a bunch of these during my uh, personal experiences, but the first one is a group interview, obviously when uh, multiple people interview you. Then there's a lunch interview, you get interviewed during lunch. And then there's the work study interview where it's basically you show your uh, portfolio and past projects that you've worked on. Exude confidence. Now based on the scale, I would suggest strong. If you go for invincible or you try to break the scale, you're just going to come off as cocky. Everyone loves a confident candidate. They love people who are confident in themselves and their abilities, but don't go overboard or else you'll look cocky. Stand out. Now, I'm sure that anyone who's a How I Met Your Mother fan will love the Yellow Umbrella reference, but uh, employers always pay attention to, or they go through tons of interviews. So what you need to do is you need to make a point of standing out. Go above and beyond. Do something that no other employee or interviewer has ever done. And that coincides with selling yourself. If you sell, if you, no one, believe, no one knows you better than you know you, and no one knows your best traits better than you. Uh, so if you can sell yourself uh, successfully, then they'll, they're more likely to buy into what you're selling. Qualifications and experiences. What makes you qualified for the job? Why are you qualified? What experiences in the past made you qualified? That goes with experience. Experience is huge. Anything that you've done in the past outlines the skills that, you will, that will pertain to your job that you're applying for now. Don't focus on money. Everyone wants to make a lot of money when they grow up in their future careers, but it's not the most important thing. Don't make it the big topic of discussion. From, uh, if you focus too much on money and you show that that's the most important thing, they're not going to be interested in you. The most important thing is the job at hand. And that goes into body language. If you ask about the salary and you're not impressed by the salary, you're going to show it through body language. So you want to make sure that you maintain uh, proper demeanor, that you're confident, and that you uh, show interest in the job and not just the money. Have a conversation. Don't treat the interview like an interrogation. The interviewer is not there to rip on you. He's not there to roast you. He's there to get to know you and to know why you're qualified for the position. So relax, have a conversation, and don't be uh, intimidated by the questioning. But with that said, don't get too comfortable either. Because if you get too comfortable, that leaves room for going off topic. You could start asking personal questions about them. You could go off topic and talk about something completely different. So don't get too comfortable, stay on topic, and make sure you avoid making any mistakes like that. Keep it recent. Obviously, it's better to have uh, more recent experiences because you know them better, you remember them better. Uh, also, if you were to bring up more past experiences, then they might look at it as, why isn't he bringing up the more recent ones? Did he do something wrong? Was he fired? You don't want them getting suspicious and questioning you about that, so try to bring them up. Make your future goals clear. Obviously, people like a uh, motivated employee, a motivated interviewer. So when you go in, make sure that you uh, show them that you want to grow, that you have potential, and that you're looking forward to the future in the company. Focus on yourself. Like in track, if you look over at the other lanes and focus on your competition, you're going to slow yourself down. Look straight ahead. Focus on yourself. If you look at others, you're just going to make yourself seem nervous, and you're going to make yourself seem like you're doubting yourself. Stay on topic. The topic is you. So my personal experience, uh, I interviewed at Sherwin-Williams. We went to Houlihan's. It was a lunch interview, and because it was at Houlihan's, he was a little laid back. Uh, he started asking me personal questions. I kept it vague, kept it to the point. Uh, basically got a free meal out of it because I didn't take it, but I still thought it was an effective interview. I did take this one. It was uh, Denner and Morantz. Um, it was a group interview, and here you see our uh, wonderful president-elect Donald Trump being swarmed by the media. Uh, I kind of felt the same way. I was a little overwhelmed. I had uh, six people interview me one by one, but I thought it was effective because I got to meet the entire team. And lastly, uh, the Bergen Academies, that was a portfolio or a work-study uh, interview. I shared my portfolio, went over past projects, 
went over my uh, uh, community service, and it didn't work out, but now I'm going to go with uh, Joe. He's going to talk about interviewing more. Hi everyone, my name is Joe Kuhn, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about how to conduct an effective interview. So an interview is one of the most crucial steps in the hiring process. And you really want to make sure that you have the right skills in order to gather the correct information to make sure you're hiring the right person. So today I want to talk about two things mostly. I want to talk about interview etiquette and the different techniques that you can use in an interview. So the six different techniques are non-directive, structured, uh, situational, behavioral, targeted, and evaluation, an evaluative interview. But first off, I want to start with the basics with etiquette. So First off, preparedness. Preparedness is more than just having a list of questions that you want to ask the, your candidate. It's knowing your candidate and also knowing the job that they're applying for. So make sure you take some time to look at their resume before they actually come in so you can have relevant questions to ask them. Next thing, when they actually come in, make sure you create a positive, comforting, relaxing environment. If a candidate isn't really feeling comfortable or is nervous, then they're not going to really be able to articulate well why they might be a good fit for the position. So you might actually end up missing out on someone who might have been perfect for a hiring. Next thing you want to do is you want to gather some information. So obviously the most important thing is that the person is qualified. So you want to ask them about their past experiences and their skills. Ask them about where they've been in their career, what they've done, and how it's helped them, and why it makes them relevant to today. So then we have active listening. As an interviewer, you don't want to do most of the talking. You want to let the interviewee do most of the talking. So ask them relevant questions and listen to how they answer questions. Are they answering questions strongly or vaguely? If they're asking something, answering something vaguely, that might mean they're not actually as qualified as they're saying they are. And then part of active listening is taking notes. Um, you want to jot down as many notes as you can during an interview without being a distraction to yourself or the interviewee. Taking notes is a really good way to keep track of all the people you might be looking at to hire for a position. That way, when you're looking back, you know who you're wanting to get and who might be the best candidate. And then lastly, about eight or 10 minutes at the end of the interview, leave some space for questions. While a point of an interview is getting a feel for an interviewee, part of it is also having them come into the company and figure out a little bit more about a job or a position that they might not have read from the description. So you want to make sure that they are doing their own analysis too. And lastly, make sure you inform the interviewee about what's happening after the interview. Let them know how you'll be contacting them, about what time frame, and if there are any other additional steps after the interview process. There's nothing worse than walking out of an interview feeling lost or forgotten about. Moving on to the techniques, the first one we have is non-directive. So think of this as kind of getting all the cards on the table. You ask the interviewer, I mean the interviewee, anything that really comes to mind and you want to gather as much information and it's very relaxed and you let one answer maybe spark another question for them in your head. Next we have structured, which is kind of the opposite. So in a structured interview, you have a set list of questions that are pre-made for generally every candidate. So you sit down and you go through the list of questions and you don't really deviate from that. So that makes um, the process similar for all the candidates. Next we have situational, I mean, yeah, situational. So in a situational interview, you're kind of looking for the potential for future like job preparedness. So you're gonna ask the interviewee a question about something that might happen in the job environment and how they would react to it. Similarly, we have behavioral and targeting, and I put these two together because a lot of their main aspects coincide. And in this one, you're looking for an interviewer, I mean a candidate, who is knowledgeable and has already had a similar position. So you're asking them about a passive experience and how they've conducted themselves in that way. Lastly, we have evaluative. So in this um, technique, it's, the point of it is to get rid of interviewer bias. So it's kind of more of a written scoring thing, and after an evaluative technique uh, interview, whatever candidate has the highest score is generally considered to be the most appealing. Last thing I want to touch on were the restrictions. 
So as an interviewee, you have an interviewer, you need to know the HR laws that are preventing discrimination. So you need to ask questions that are relevant to the job and that can be asked of any other candidate. So you don't want to ask things about gender or like sexual identity or marital status. So I just want to touch about what some personal experience that I had with an interview that I felt the interviewers weren't prepared and um, because of that, I wasn't able to interview effectively and get my point across as a, person, like a potential candidate. So when I first arrived at the, uh, the company, the two interviewers who I was supposed to be meeting with were actually in another meeting. So I had to sit down in the lobby and wait about 20 to 30 minutes. And I actually had another interview that day in Philly so I was kind of really stressed out already because I was wondering if I was going to run in late. And when I finally got in, they greeted me and then they kind of sat down and just looked at me for 20 seconds. And I felt really uncomfortable. They didn't really say much. And then when they started the interview, they were kind of just talking between themselves and didn't really have any structured questions for me. So they felt that they were unprepared and it was a little bit unprofessional. And because of that, I know I didn't do well. I walked out of the interview thinking, wow, like that did not go well. And it didn't, and not to blame it on them, but I wasn't able to articulate well how I was fit for this position, and I actually did not end up getting offered a position with them. Oh well. But um, anyways, to recap my presentation, I talked about the different skills and that you need to be an effective interviewer, as well as the different techniques that you can use during your interview, depending on what kind of hiring you're looking to do. Next, we have Ryan Krupa, who's going to talk to you guys about the selection process. What's going on, guys? Uh, I'm Ryan Krupa. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, selection. Uh, so this is something like, why are you asking? Why is this important to us? Uh, as business students, as uh, human resource management students, this is something that in a couple of years from now, when we're hired at a company, this is the processes we're going to be going through. So I'm just going to touch on a little bit of everything uh, based on this. So first of all, what is selection? Um, selection is the process of having a group of candidates who are all qualified in their own way come together and your job as the selection people is to find the best of the best. So you weed through the not so strong candidates, the pretty strong candidates, and then the best candidates. And then once you find the best, you narrow it down and then you finally hire that person. So the phases of uh, the selection process, first is the pre-interview the interview and the actual selection itself. I'm going to touch on all, all three of those a little bit. They already covered it a lot, so I'm not going to do it. And then hiring and onboarding, which uh, Derek's going to take care of after I'm done here. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, the interview. So in pre-interview, there's the job analysis, which comes first, which is identifying what exactly it is that you want to achieve. So what does this job entail? What is this job, um, like what, what is the actual description and what are you trying to um, fill a position? Then reviewing resumes and recruiting, that all goes along with it as well. And I'm going to touch on that actually uh, right after this. So first, reviewing resumes. How do you find the best candidate from a piece of paper? So you have to go into that. Sometimes you're at 100 resumes, sometimes there's thousands of resumes. And basically you have to look at each one and look for a couple critical aspects of it, GPA, experience, um, community service, stuff like that. And you have to find the best of the best just from a piece of paper to get the actual interview. This is something that's important. Recruiting is very crucial. Um, people sometimes like look at this because it's like a behind the scenes thing that people don't really notice too much. But recruiting is actually huge because no matter how great your company is, you have to realize that sometimes the best candidates don't come to you. You have to go out and get those candidates sometimes. Uh, now we're going to go into the actual interview itself. Um, when, so like as an interviewer, I'm not going to go too in depth into this. But the big question you always want to keep in mind is why should we hire this person? What is it about this person walking in the door that's going to change your company in a positive way? Um, what can they bring that's different than the next guy who's coming in after them? So that's basically what you're looking for. Um, some of the things we're looking for when they come in the door. This is very critical. Um, you want to be confident. That's like the number one thing. You want to go in there and you just want to be like, look, this is my job. I got this. I'm about to take it. You don't want to be like, oh, timid. Like, oh, I don't know if I got this. You want to be dressed to the nine. You want to be looking fresh. You want to be ready to go. Trim haircut. Like, everything's going good. You're smelling good. All of that. What are we not looking for, though? This is, this is a big one, too. Um, as, as women, as you see here, uh, I mean, this girl looks like she's going to the club. She looks good, don't get me wrong, but that's not, that's not what we're looking for for this. Uh, my guy over here, I mean, he looks like he literally just rolled out of bed, smoked weed, and he's coming to an interview. Like, that's no good. Like, these guys just sent out the door. That's not what we're looking for. So, uh, don't let your appearance blow an opportunity for you. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, now let's talk about the selection itself. So, selection process, there's four main parts. Uh, planning, review, research, 
eliminate and hire. So you can't review any resumes until you plan exactly.